Can I have your attention, please? Hello. Can I have your attention, please? This is the rowdiest Presbyterian church I've ever been in. So we can ask everybody to take their seats. It's time to start our graduation ceremony. My name is Van Ellison. I want to welcome all of you here on behalf of the board of directors, the volunteers, the trustees, the staff, and especially the residents and families of Justin's Place. We want to thank you for joining us today. I'd like to invite our graduates to come in. And I think it's just about time for our choir to show up here too. So if we can join us in, we'll...
Well, my heart's always that enthusiastic, but my face usually isn't. So we want to thank them for, for adding some life and some zest to this. But thank you very much, guys. Well, this is a Justin's Place graduation, and Justin's Place could not exist without the gift of donors, without the support of the community, but without our church partnerships. And one of those key partnerships is the First Baptist Church in LaBelle, where many of our men go and where they're participating in that church. And Pastor Frank Deary, would you come and give us an invocation? Thank you. 
Let's bow our heads. Lord, we are grateful to be in this place today as we have already experienced the joy of the Lord. Lord, as we come together today, Lord, many are sitting here because you have made your way into their lives. And Lord, because you have made your way into their lives, their lives now, Lord, are on fire for you. We rejoice in that that churches and organizations can come together throughout the different counties that are represented to be a part of a ministry that touches lives. Lord, we thank you for using all of us. And Lord, to see the joy that is here tonight, the excitement that is here tonight. Lord, that we all come together to praise you because you are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord. And we are coming expecting to see, Lord, tonight, fresh and anew, testimonies of what you have done and what you will continue to do, Lord, as we keep you first in our life. We thank you in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Well, it's always a joy. These graduations are an exciting and a fun time for all of us. This year, it's especially exciting to me. Yesterday was a very special day. It was Peggy's birthday. Um, For those of you that don't know my assistant, Peggy, who we've worked together for 20 years, so. She's a certain age. So nonetheless. It was also special because yesterday was Father's Day. And, you know, I got to spend some time with my kids, and we got to fellowship and share and laugh and tease each other and harass. And it was a joy sitting at a restaurant, talking a little bit and and talking to my boys. And the reality of this graduation is in some ways a stark contrast. There are families all over our community who have been torn apart, have been devastated by an addiction. There are fathers who went to bed last night hoping and praying that their son or daughter was still alive yesterday, was still alive today. There were fathers who had been pulled from their families because of their addictions. There were families that were broken. The reality is, on a day like today, we get to see the miraculous happen because we're celebrating not just another Father's Day, but I think about the joy in a family when you've had absolute brokenness and separation and heartache, and today there's peace and there's victory and the rejoicing. You know, I, one time years ago, I, I had had a dream about what I wanted to do with my life. And one of the things I wanted to do was start a program like Justin's Place. And as I planned and I worked at, nothing ever worked out right. And one day we started this program and um, didn't have the budget for it. And a family came along and said, you know, in the memory of our son who we lost, we want to start a program to honor his memory, but to transform lives. So a miracle is that a son who is lost gets to be the father of recovery for hundreds and hundreds of people. What a blessing it is to have a special Father's Day in his memory and in his honor. What a blessing it is. One of my friends, as I was talking about the excitement of starting Justin's Place, and he said, you know what makes it so exciting for you? And I said, what? He said, because God does something very special. A resurrected dream A dream that you had and that died because you didn't have the money, you didn't have the resources or the circumstances or the opportunity, the hope that was lost. When God resurrects that and you have a new life and you have a new vision, it's far more powerful than the original one was. So today we celebrate the day after Father's Day, celebrating just absolute miracles in the men and the women here and the families that get to look up here and see loved ones alive 
full of freedom, full of sobriety, full of a different kind of life than they ever would have imagined. Even those who have lost somebody can celebrate today the reality of transformation, the reality of a miracle. I think that that great, great host of witnesses would look down from heaven and say, we're rejoicing with you on this day that it is indeed our Heavenly Father's day. You know, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. Those other things are life, our joy, our peace, our family, victory, and freedom. Most of the folks who come to St. Matthew's house and to Justin's place have a distorted view of who their heavenly father is. They look at it and they think, I don't know that I trust him. I don't know that he cares about me. This verse tells us when we put him first, all those other things begin to fall into place and God will bring about great victories. So today we're rejoicing. This is one of my favorite days of the year. It happens to have three or four times a year where we get to celebrate with so many faces and dig. afterwards to have parents come up and say, you know, I didn't think my son would, would be alive this time. What a great way to celebrate Father's Day, that we get to glorify our Father in heaven, experience His goodness and His grace, and rejoice together. So this is a very special day for us. We're proud of our graduates. We thank those who have supported and created this program. We thank those who serve in it. In this room, there, I look around and I see volunteers and people who participate in various aspects of the program. And what a joy it is to see God's grace happening in a spectacular way in our midst. We thank you for being part of this resurrection, this wonderful life. So I'd like to ask Ashley, one of our graduates, to come forward. a lot of you. <laughs> okay, good evening. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. My name is Ashley. I'm 29 years old. I was born and raised here in Naples, Florida, and um, I grew up with a very loving and supportive family. Um, I've always had God in my life. I can remember from a young age putting my little hands together and closing my eyes and just praying the sinner's prayer with my grandma, and I didn't really know what it meant, but I just knew that I believed in what I was praying. And when I was about two years old, my mom kicked my biological father out of the house and later divorced him due to his active addiction. Um, he's still not in my life, and he's still in active addiction today. Growing up, I was very happy and outgoing. Um, I was the kid that would talk in class and get in trouble and moved by the teacher, but whoever she put me next to, I would be talking to them. And then she'd move me to by her desk, and I would start a conversation with her. So... <laughs> I'm not, sure, I'm not sure why, but I always felt like I wasn't good enough and I wasn't important enough. Um, since I can remember, I've suffered from severe anxiety, which always left me feeling uncomfortable in my own skin. Um, at 12 years old in middle school, one of my best friends introduced me to Xanax, and in that I found my peace. Um, my anxiety would disappear, and all of a sudden I was comfortable and I was good enough. At 14, the same best friend that introduced me to Xanax um, and another friend of mine died of a drug overdose. I had a best friend that was like a sister to me suddenly move away to Ohio, and I went through a lot of other things that were very difficult for me to understand and deal with appropriately. In a search to find a way to cope, um, I indulged myself with more drugs and more alcohol. Between 14 and 18 years old, I was arrested several times. I continued making poor choices, not even realizing the effects of my use. Um, at 19, I moved out of my mom and stepdad's house, and I was living on my own. I had my own car, paying all my own bills, working two jobs. I was in complete denial about my addiction since I was functioning as an addict. At 21, I was introduced to my drug of choice, um, which is opiates. I found a whole new level of peace and comfort that I've been looking for. My life slowly but surely spiraled out of control. Um, eventually, I lost all my material possessions I had worked hard for, and I ruined all my relationships, my family, and friends. Um, I was arrested several more times as an adult. And on December 31st, 2015, was the last time I was arrested, and I found myself stuck in jail with no one to bomb me out this time. I was facing prison, 
and only by God's grace did the judge I was standing before recommend that I seek help and I go into Justin's Place program. I came into this program on April 29th and I was met by Cassie, who is now a case manager for the program. Um, she was very warm and friendly and she made me feel welcome. This is when I experienced the peace of God that surpasses all understanding as it talks about in Philippians 4, 7. I then knew that this is where I belonged and that I would be okay. Since coming into this program, I have developed real and healthy friendships. God has restored my family. Um, so many times, God has showed up confirming the work he was doing in my life as well as others around me. I, have, I've had, the I had the privilege to work with Chef Chris um, in the kitchen, and I was able to graduate from the Catalyst Kitchen Culinary Program that St. Matthew's House provides. Today, I am responsible, I'm accountable, I'm, time, I'm timely, I'm employed with St. Matthew's House, and I also work with a local ministry. I regularly attend meetings in church, following Jesus and finding balance through that in my life today. I have a sponsor and a huge support network, which helps me to maintain my sobriety. Ultimately, I am so grateful to God for his, <clears throat> for his undeserved love, mercy, and grace. He continually showers on me every day. My family and friends here tonight to watch me complete this transformational program. I love all of you. Thank you. Um, I'm not done yet. Um, and I just want to thank all the donors that give of themselves to give us this gift of recovery and the Justin's Place program that carries on the, the memory of Justin Holacek. In Romans 8.28, God promises to work all things together for our good, and he has fulfilled that promise to me time and time again. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to be speaking tonight. Thank you, everyone, for being here to celebrate the graduates and support St. Matthew's House. My name is Connor Bagley, and I'm 24 years old. I was born in Lompoc, California, as the youngest of three children. After my father was laid off from work, we moved east to be closer to family. We settled down in La Porte, Indiana, where I spent the majority of my life. I grew up in an alcoholic home. Both of my parents drank excessively on a regular basis. The physical needs of my two sisters and I were met, but we lived in a very emotionally unstable environment. It was during my childhood that feelings of helplessness towards my parents' alcoholism caused me many issues with trust, as well as a low sense of self-esteem. Around the age of 14, I began experimenting with drugs and alcohol on the weekends. By the age of 16, I was drinking every day in order to escape reality. At the age of 17, I began using heroin. During the next five years of my addiction, I drove away the people that cared for me most. After being arrested, I was kicked out of my house. I was living in hell. I had finally had enough. I was tired of feeling ashamed and lost. I felt empty and trapped. I attempted to take my own life, but it wasn't my time to go. It was rock bottom and I needed help. I entered detox on March 20th, 2015. After returning home, I began using again and came to the staggering conclusion that I had to change everything about my life. I first heard about St. Matthew's House through my mother and her experience in recovery. Having spent so much time in my addiction wishing that I could press the reset button on life, I decided that a long-term program was best. So I boarded a plane and arrived at Justin's Place March 31st, 2015 which means that my sobriety date falls on April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> on that day, it could have very well been considered a joke, especially for those that knew me in the past, but today I have over two years sober. When I arrived at Justin's place, I was welcomed with open arms. Although I wanted to leave immediately, I was encouraged by staff to take life a day at a time. Being agnostic at this point in my life, I was very angry with God and blamed him for all my troubles. <clears throat> a small group brother of mine encouraged me to continue reading the Bible. 
During morning devotions one day, I read Matthew 10, 37, which reads, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. This verse shook me to my core, and in an instance, I realized my denial. I had spent my whole life blaming others because life was not the way I wanted it to be. I was ready to surrender and grow up. A month later, I transitioned to LaBelle. Living in close quarters with 50 other men demanded that I learn assertive communication and conflict resolution. The large brotherhood in LaBelle diminished my feelings of loneliness, and I began to feel understood. I enrolled in the Catalyst Kitchen program, learned about the culinary arts, and found purpose in cooking food for the community. <clears throat> when it was time to transition to Wolf Apartments, I made the decision to stay back and serve as a peer mentor. Being on the recovery team taught me the importance of humility and service. In the course of walking alongside other men in LaBelle, I was asked to be an intern. After serving as an intern for several months, God opened the door for case management. I took the opportunity. A little over a year after becoming case manager, God continues to bless me. And today, I have the honor and privilege of walking alongside these men as the LaBelle program supervisor. <laughs> Justin's place led me to God and saved me from a life of bondage. Because of this program, I have found a peace that I never thought was possible. <clears throat> Justin's place has set me up for success. Today I have my own car and my own place. The relationship with my family has been restored and I can have meaningful conversations with them. Thank you to everyone who encouraged me while in the program. My small group, Ben, Chad, Adam, and Neil, your support has been invaluable. I'm especially grateful for all the donors that helped sustain Justin's place. Thank you. Congratulations to all the graduates. Learning to get out of your own way in a year-long program is no easy task. I know this because I lived with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's about you guys. Look at this accomplishment as motivation to continue doing the right thing. Now is the time to use all the tools you've gathered. Strong storms await us all, but if we stay close to God no matter what and seek Him, we can make it through. God bless you all, and thank you for letting me share. I want to thank Ashley and Connor. The first year Ash, uh, Connor was with us, I didn't hear him speak that many words in the entire year. So it's, a, <laughs> it's an amazing thing to see the transformation. And what a miracle to see God working in people's lives. So thank you so much. Uh, at this point in the program, we want to do a couple of things. We want to get on with our graduation part. But before that, we want to do, we're changing the way we've done it in the past a little bit. Each module, we do something where, as a group is preparing to graduate, the members of the program will vote on whose life they've seen transformed, who, whose life exemplifies the elements of recovery, abiding by the 12 steps, walking with integrity, and walking in such a way that the world is impacted, that they as a community have been impacted. This isn't a staff award. This isn't something I get to find out about until tonight. And so, what we like to do is we've named this award in honor and memory of Justin Halachek, who through his, his life and his sacrifice of his own life, this program has been established. And so, the Justin Halachek Award is given specifically to those people in our program who have seen the most dramatic impact and voted upon by their peers. If I could ask Rachel uh, Lokanen, our, uh, our vice chair of our board, and um, Neil and Lori and Chad, wherever he may be, to come up and join me. We'll just go ahead and present our Justin Halachek Award recipients in the women's program, as voted on by her peers, is Ashley Galloway. Yeah. 
And in the men's program, we have Michael Thompson. We would like at this time to ask our graduates to line up. We're going to change it up a little bit here. We'll um, have our graduates line up. If Neil, you'll take your place and I'll grab these certificates. Wherever I put them. Ah, there they are. Neil? For a participant in Justin's place to graduate means that they've been with us, maintained sobriety for 365 days, that they've lived a life of reflection, of honesty, of integrity, that they've worked with their peers, with a staff, with a team of volunteers to address the burdens in their life, to address their addictions, and to find freedom. We celebrate today, this is a simple certificate, and a piece of paper doesn't do justice for the work, the dedication, What's amazing to me is that people will come in feeling like there is no hope and they can't get a day or two sober. But today we're celebrating the fact that Justin's place has saved these lives. Neil? Our, our, our first graduate is Ashley Galloway. Justin's place gave me my life back, and I'm thankful for that. Thank you. Our next graduate, Janice Hale. I have a relationship with Christ now, and Christ has brought my family back together. I have Noah Daniel, my son, in my life, and it has shown me true love. Our next, our next graduate, Sarah Hartzell. Congratulations, we're so proud of you. Justin's place has not only saved my life, but it has showed me a new way to live. Thank you. Up next, Allison Voppel. Congratulations, Allison. We're so proud of you. Um, Justin's place has saved my life and restored my family and I want to thank all of you for your support. Up next to the guys starting with Dodge Boroyan.
I'm thankful for the Justin's Place program, all the men and women that are working it. Grateful for the greatest sponsor in the world, Zach Minot. <laughs> and I'm grateful for Jake Ross, my fallen small group brother, who's uh, not forgotten. Michael Fratarelli. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Justin's Place, I have God in my life now and a brotherhood. Up next, Robert Gray. James Hardesty. James, I'm so proud of you, brother. <laughs> I'm grateful for Justin's place. Uh, God saved my life and you know, you guys gave me a place where I can work on myself. Up next, Eric Hines. Oh, so proud of you, brother. Nice job. Here you go. Thank you. I'm grateful for Justin's Place Recovery Program for saving my life and family restoration. Steve Lawrence. Congratulations, Steve. Bless you, buddy. I'm Steve, and I've been blessed with so very much. Thank you. Up next, we have Thomas Levine. What a fan club. Hello, um, <laughs> I'm grateful for St. Matthew's House and Justin's Place. I am grateful for my family, my mother, who's been wonderful to me my whole life. <laughs> and I'm grateful that I could be a father to my kids, Sawyer, Sydney, Dalton, that are here, and Jewel and Kylie that are not here, and to all my mob brothers, love you guys. <laughs> Next up, Brandon Malinowski. Um, man, I'm grateful for the I'm grateful for the program. It's uh, it's taught me a new way of life. It's allowed me to be a big brother for my sister again, be a son to my parents, uh, be a, be a nephew to my aunt and my and a grandson for my grandfather who are, who are all here to support me tonight. Up next, the newest case manager in LaBelle, Eric Margolis. Fan club too. Who would have thought? Congratulations, so proud of you. 
<laughs> I'm thankful for my mom and dad, thankful for God, and I'm thankful for second and third chances. Up next, we've got Gabriel Miller. I'm grateful for my family and for Justin's place for helping God save my life. Yeah. Now we have Matthew Minnis. Matt, we're so proud of you, brother. Let's start from that time. <laughs> Uh, I'm grateful for Justin's Place giving me my life back and uh, the miracle of family restoration. My family's here tonight. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Philip Oliver. Bless you, brother. I'm so proud of you. I am thankful for this program, for getting my life back on track, and for family restoration. Let's introduce John Overstreet. John, how you doing, brother? Bless you. Thank you. Oh, 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 just one of them. Just one? I can't have one. <laughs> I'm grateful for my family, my, my friends, all my mod brothers, and uh, this season to get my life back together. Now we have our choir leader, Dominic Petruzio. God in my life that allowed me to have the gift of desperation to find Justin's place. And uh, it's changed my life dramatically. I'm grateful for my son, my two sons, my family, Kim, um, my sponsor, Dan, Neil, God, Chad, Connor. And I'm truly grateful for the people that walk through these doors. They are the true heroes in my life. Thank you. James Sager. James, so proud of you, brother. Oh, sorry. Oh, one of them. There we go. <laughs> Justin's place has given me the courage, strength, and hope for the future. Up next, we've got Donald Seabury. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm grateful for this program. Um, it really did save my life, and grateful for my family sticking by me no matter what. I love y'all. Michael Thompson, come on up here again, man. Michael, so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Buddy. <laughs> I'm grateful for Jesus, grateful for my mom and dad, grateful for Justin's place, and grateful for Ben Tong. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations to all of our graduates. At this time, I would like to invite our program participants and graduates to join me in reciting our commitment pledge. That can be found in your program at the bottom of the inside page. <clears throat> participants and graduates, commitment pledge. Stand up. Please stand. I will live my life.
I'm Rachel Lokanen, Vice Chairman of the Board of Directors. Joe Trachtenberg is on vacation, so he asked me to fill in for him for this event. And I have to say, it's one of those events you put on your calendar. And for me, I hope and pray that there's no court-appointed deadline that I have to meet so that I can be here. Um, I cannot say enough of what it is to know these brothers and sisters in Christ. Before every meeting of the Board of Directors, we always have a testimony from someone who's in the program so that we center ourselves, we know the work that we're doing, what we're supposed to be about. What I'd like to do right now is recognize those who serve on the Board of Directors with me. If you would please stand up and be recognized. They're in the back here. I think it goes without mention that this is a community project. I am so grateful that Van did not get up, give up the fight. He continued on. He had this dream in his heart, and he continued on, knowing that this was the path that God had given him. And I think I speak for the rest of the board of directors. We're just so grateful to be a part of that journey, of that hope, of that dream. And we're so grateful to be a part of your future, your very special future. So I, in, like I said, in getting ready for these events, I, I pray, please God, put a verse on my heart. I want to know what it is that I could possibly say after everyone has spoken that would have any meaning whatsoever. And what I found interesting is I had a verse placed on my heart. I went to church yesterday, and guess what my preacher spoke on? Those very verses. Um, and this earlier today, I had not mentioned this to Van, what verses I was thinking about, and he mentioned it, this cloud of witnesses that we have that have gone before us. Justin Holacek, who's gone before us, this enormous cloud of witnesses that we have that are cheering us on. And that's the way I see my role on the board of directors. I will do everything in my power to make this program better and better and better, because that's part of my race. That's what's been set before me. So let me share this verse with you. It's out of Hebrews 12. Now in Hebrews 11, the writer talks about all these greats that have come before, Enoch, Abraham, name them, Abel, David, all these greats that had come before. And I think we can all say none of them were perfect. Uh, King David, for example, whoa, Ugh. <laughs> wow. And he was after God's heart. Um, so I share that with you because he had a past, but he understood his future. And I think this is what I love about Hebrews 12, because in this time you've been going through this program, you've been set apart. You've had the time you've always needed to finally think about you, your future, your race, what God has put in your life. Why did he bring you here and what's been set before you? So Hebrews 12 verses 1 through 3 say, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such great opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and you will not lose heart. I'm reminded of Isaiah 40, 31, which was also a verse that someone had chosen. And it says, you'll, you'll, you'll run, but you won't grow faint. You'll mount up on wings like eagles. And what I love about this verse is you've walked through all these steps, but what this verse tells you to do is to run. Run with everything you have. Don't look back, look forward, look where you're going. God has a path, a plan for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 has secured that future for you. And I just wanna impress upon you, we're here. We're part of that cloud of witnesses. All these other witnesses, we are your cheerleaders and we are right behind you, cheering you on. So congratulations to everyone and thank you so much for letting us be a part of your lives. Well, we want to, this is the, probably the best part of the evening because 
food is just around the corner. And, but what a joy it is to share this time with so many of our graduates and their families and the residents. But you know, I want to um, just want to, in the closing comments, just draw your attention to the reality that for we have this day of great celebration, but it's not intended to be a day of celebration. This is intended for our graduates to be a life committed to hope, transformation, sobriety, and making a difference. When I look over and I see these men and women who are living their, their lives in front of these other folks, probably the rowdiest group we've had, but nonetheless, <laughs> you know who you are. So, um, Living your lives as sober men and women, committed not just to life transformation, but living a life of transformation that makes such a difference. And so we're proud of each of you. We want to thank you for being here. You know, this day we celebrate just the miracle of a 12-step program that was given so that people could find a path to recovery, of a Savior who died to give us eternal life. You know of a walk, of a journey, of obedience and sacrifice, a walk and a journey, of freedom. You know, in this audience, there's all kinds of folks, pastors, co-workers, employees of St. Matthew's House, parents. We've got a judge here to make sure you behave, Judge Martin, the best judge in the county, <laughs> unless you're doing something real bad. But, the, um, but ultimately, you have a father this day after Father's Day who promises you that he will be with you in the difficult times and rejoicing and celebrating and hope and that you have that future in him. May God be with you in all that you do. Bless you and let's celebrate together. If you want to support us, there is a table out there. Since Joe's not here, Joe's the great pitch man to ask you to donate and contribute. So I get to do the awkward phase of asking you, you know, our family's excited about making a difference in people's lives. That happens with working, with giving a hug, with sharing, but it, it's important that you give and support this ministry as well. God bless you and look forward to talking.